Hey guys, it's Trize here, back with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Serpent Everglade. This compact pickup truck was a competitor to similar trucks like this on the market, like the Chevy S10 and Dodge Dakota. As you can see, with the weird fixture placements, I've managed to flip the entire body around in Blender and was able to drive it in BeamNG. It was a tedious process, but I'd managed to make it happen. Anyways, I'll explain the details of this truck throughout this portion of the video. It has a lap time of 1 minute 45 seconds, 46 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, and 2 minutes 52 seconds, 94 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 105 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 11.8 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a 2.5 liter inline 4 engine that produces 134.1 horsepower and 151.7 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 16.1 miles per gallon and weighs 3,117.8 pounds, which equals to 1,414.2 kilograms. And now, let's go over the specs of this vehicle. In terms of how I made this freaking backwards truck, and don't mind the tires right here because they try to make this work in Beam and G, flipping the body around in Blender. So I'll explain that process a little bit later. So for the panel material of this truck, it is made out of regular steel with a ladder type chassis made out of galvanized steel. With a front longitudinal engine placement and the front suspension we're using is a double wishbone and the rear suspension uses the old solid axle leaf. For the engine, it's an inline 4 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to a 94.5 millimeters and the stroke at exactly 89 millimeters, which gets the true engine size to 2,497 cubic centimeters or round it up would equal to 2.5 liters. And we're using a single overhead cam 2 valve made out of cast iron. For the balance shaft, we're going to be using a balance shaft to be built in to reduce the chance to crank shaft the crankshaft, the counterons, and pistons from exploding due to high RPM stress. So for the crankshaft, it's made out of good old cast iron, but the counterrod set to a regular cast, and the pistons is set to a hyper eutetic cast, which boosts emissions, and not only that, compared to cast pistons, you're losing power of cast pistons, but hyper eutetic cast, you gain a little bit right here. For the compression, it is set to a reasonable amount at a durable of a 9.4 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set to a bare normal setting to a 32 and the springs and lifters soften them up just a tad to a 43. For the fuel system, we're using a multi-point electronic fuel injector with a single throttle setup with a compact intake running on regular fuel with the fuel mixture set to a 14.6, the ignition timing set to a 59, and the RPM limit is set to a 5700 RPM. And wrapping things up with the exhaust and all that good stuff, so for the headers, we're using the good old short cast headers like most cars use nowadays. Well, back its time period, with a single exhaust setup with the exhaust cylinder size set to a 50.8 millimeters, which equals to 2 inches. And we're using a 3-way catalytic converter with the first muffler set to a none, and the second one is a reverse flow. As you can see right here, way in the back, we got our good old muffler right up in here, folks. And real quickly, let's give you one to hear what this engine sounds like right about now. I'll do this real quickly. Not too bad of a sounding engine despite being a four-cylinder, even though for trucks like this, they either use four-cylinders at this type of displacement or some small six-cylinder engines. So heading towards the second half portion with this vehicle here, so for the drive type, we're going to be using a longitudinal rear-wheel drive setup with an automatic four-speed, but the top speed set to 106 miles per hour. Even though it says it can go up to 113, but a truck with a four-cylinder at this size, at this power rating, Eh, I mean doable, but not too realistic. I don't want to say realistic, realistic, but let's say safe. 
So for the tires, just bear with me with the freaking setup I got going here. Well, we're briefly about this. Go into fixtures and go to advanced trim settings. This is for the open beta version of automation. Well, I hit the chassis first of all. And going down to suspension and under body, I did set the front and rear wheelbase to negative 40. Is because when I flipped the body and for Beam and G, this is pretty much how it looked like in Beam and G without this current setup used in automation. So it looks stupid in automation, but in Beam and G when the body's flipped, around it would look pretty much back to normal so again for the tires we're using some radio hard long life tires with the front and rear tire with each set to 215 millimeters front and back running on some 17 inch steel rims for the brakes pretty much realistic as possible so the front is a solid disc 2 piston with its size set to 325 millimeters and the rear is a drum single shoe with its size set to 285 millimeters and for the aerodynamics, no under trade whatsoever as we got the chassis hidden from that advanced trim settings I just showed you. Tiny bit of brake airflow, but for the interior of the vehicle, I tried to do this, but it looks so ridiculously stupid to put an interior with the seats pretty much where the dashboard goes and a dashboard here, but I could really do so with the setup of this vehicle and the current fixtures we got in automation for interiors and all that good stuff. So pretending we do got an interior setup, it's a standard issue interior with a standard cassette player and heading it over to the safety of the vehicle and all that good stuff. We got some hydraulic power steering with no traction aids whatsoever and standard issue 1980 standard safety standards. And finally, for the suspension of the vehicle, pretty basic. We got some standard springs of gas, mono 2 dampers, new option pass the sway bars, running on a modified normal preset. All I did was just increase the st spring stiffness, damper stiffness, and increase the ride height a little bit so it's not like a low rider up in here. Despite the only three problems with just yelling at me in automation, such as the front and rear tires being quite wide and some minor wheel spin issues, let's jump into BBG Drive without exporting it for a second time and see how this weird truck will perform. So here we are at the map of Italy, and what I get here is the Garvel D series. Well, this is just your standard issue normal truck that you drive in Beam and G. Steers in the front, the whole front side of the vehicle as so, but as I spawn the backwards truck, you'll see what's up. So here comes the Serpent Everglade Backwards Edition. Yes, it looks ugly, I know. So we'll take a brief look at this vehicle. Well, as we can see here, we got no textures whatsoever. While I well, prefer we no material. Oh, no, there's no textures. So while flipping the body around in Blender, so instead of having the front like being over here that kind of goes to the back, the cabin of the vehicle, and the actual back of the car like right here, now you got the rear of the vehicle being the front and going towards the so-called front of the vehicle is now your rear. And what's funny with the new front of the vehicle, we got working headlights, turn signals, <laughs> and working my way towards the front rear, we got the light of God up in here for some odd reason for the brake lights right here, the brake lights, turn signals, and reverse lights. This is so stupid that it's... <laughs> and second of all for the steering, as I approve you right here, it does steer with the back cab of the vehicle, which is now the front. And second of all, we got the engine towards the bed, not towards the front of the vehicle. So again, pretty stupid and pretty interesting. So let's go into the vehicle selectors menu and click on remove all the other vehicles to start our basic performance tests. The first one we're going to be starting off with is the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, the top speed run. Which I guarantee you, with this 2.5 liter engine, 134 horsepower, it could make its top speed. It's a little over a ton and a half, but it should be doable. Just watch. You know it's just no materials, but it should drive fine just as so. So let's get ready to drive this here weird ass no material vehicle in 3, 2, 1, go. Weak launch, but here we go. First gear underway to the second gear. And into the third gear right now. Third gear underway in fourth gear. 0 to 62 in 10.92 seconds of 606.53 feet. It seems okay for a truck like this, pretty much like your average, like, old-ass four-cylinder cars, weak V6s, but it's doable. Brake test, go. 62. No ABS as we're skidding. Go all the way. Good. 62 to 0 in 3.46 seconds of 140.52 feet. Because we got no ABS, we skidded out the car and the tires, all the good stuff. Time-wise, not the greatest compared to an ABS vehicle, but for a non-ABS vehicle, seems doable. Distance-wise, also, same thing, seems fairly doable. So for a top speed run already in effect, we're gonna get a better 0 to 62. Same time! 1092 with a 
almost a foot difference compared to the two. Wow, same time, I never had that before doing the top speed run versus the 0-62 acceleration. So the suspension's a little bit rough. We're steering... Oh yeah, the suspension is rough. This is due to me flipping the car from the automation to day file, flipping it in uh, Blender to BMG Drive when I'm driving right here. So top speed, no problem, top speed. Bounce off the red line as so, so... <laughs> Why do a top speed run if it's gonna hit top speed like with its seconds, like a damn supercar? So this is a pretty hefty four-cylinder engine in terms of power and everything, but oh yeah, I felt that dip. This suspension is pretty bad. I think it has to do with me flipping the car around. I think it's the problem. And second of all, if you know how to like flip cars while keeping the material in place, like the paint, let me know down in the, uh, the comments below. Okay, high speed crash just underway. Let's slow it down. Camera as is. High to you I go. Hit the tree as so. God damn, we twist up the truck pretty good because of it being a ladder chassis with the invisible chassis. There goes a the tire. Nothing much full time. And like that, we have killed the engine as so. Is it for the front of the vehicle or the back of the vehicle? What? Oh no, we still got the engine as so. Like that. Huh. Or the engine would have been dead because I couldn't even hear enough of how quiet this engine sounds. Alright, so go to Flatland, like right by the roundabout here to see the aftermath destruction vehicle while... Perfectly landing it, okay. So the side of the vehicle, oh man, we're two wheeling like it's been that club up here. Well, it was like one wheel and goddamn. I mean, the body is just like entirely in shambles and just crinkled up like a piece of paper almost. No matter what side you're looking at, the right side, not so much. The front end, oh boy, that side, oh boy, and this side, oh boy, and again, eh, not so much. All right, for this portion of the video coming up, we're going to be doing a time trial run at the automation test track with the full-blown racing circuit with the Serpent Everglade, the backwards edition. And we're going to be doing two laps, one lap being in regular mode, and then the next lap, I'll be facing the front end, like this would be the rear end of the vehicle, just driving as so completing the second lap. And it takes place in the noon hours, we got a lot of stuff right here, so let's take you to the start and finish line right now. So here we are at the start and finish line, just a little bit ways behind the checkered flag marking on the ground here, the checkered flag stripes up in here, so no material as so again for some odd reason. So let's get ready to start off this here time trial with the doorbell camera in 3, 2, 1, rev it, go. Launch control for a 1985, technically 1988 vehicle, eh. Okay. So cornering wise, it says there's minor, like close to oversteer. Eh, okay. As I say, it showed some minor, like, oversteer when it came, not like full boat oversteer, but really close to oversteering in automation. It was like, the graph was like 98.6% or something. Like, it was close to the oversteering mark, like almost 100% on the sportiness handling, but for the drivability, it was like 86% showing mild oversteer at slow speeds with the cornering angle, and... I forgot, we're going fast, not slow, and it's not an ABS vehicle, so keep that in mind in the second lap. Well, for backwards vehicles, like, I did see some backwards vehicles online. I think Automotive Flux made one, including one, well, that was in a live stream, I think Fail Race or Fail, I think it was Fail Race that had a live stream on Beam and G. Well, that Beam and G live stream by Fail Race, somebody submitted a Porsche body with the headlights at the back and brake lights at the front, making it its so-called backwards car, but it's not a true backwards car. This right here is a true backwards vehicle with some broken paint fixtures or uh, broken paint materials because of me flipping the body around, which I don't know how that would work out to get the paint recovered. And runner steering. So yeah, in that live stream, that's just technically a backwards vehicle. And same thing for automotive flux, it was the same thing. The wing in the actual front front of the vehicle and the taillights are in the rear right here. The headlights are in the back and the taillights are in the front without swapping the body a complete 180. So if I double check the automation times, we're getting close to the start finish line for our first lap as I stay in bounds here as I moderately understeer at mid speeds, like above you for road speeds, and no, we're not gonna get it. So the time we got in the automation game was a 2.52, and right there, that would've been our first lap, but we're in the final straightaway. So for our first lap time, let's get ready to swap the camera. Right here, see, 2 minutes, 59 seconds, 577 milliseconds. After the chicane, we're gonna swap the camera, like turn the back towards like the so-called rear of the vehicle being the front. So here's the chicane, flip the camera, as so. Oh no. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be a challenge, folks. Just, just hammering down while having a camera like this. If I crash out here, then I don't know what to say. I, I know there's a shift in the chicane up ahead of this. Uh, this left turn. Is this turn start here? There's, there's a, there's a curb. I'm going off center, and where is the brakes? Where's the braking part? Here? Oh man. 
I kind of had it right, even though some of that muscle memory and recognizing the track is doing a good job here. Now for the banquet portion, when does it start? We got those tires. Uh, okay, banquet starts here. Banquet starts here. Bacon. Damn. Okay, slow down enough thanks to the banking in the corner, slowing the truck down way much. And this will be a true challenge right here. We got a better split time? Are you kidding me? 204 milliseconds better? Well, down here is going to be even worse. As we go top speed, I believe I turn left, uh, by left. So when does it begin in this corner? Okay, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Manage broken! Manage broken! We were going to corner, but jeez! Oh, we try again in the second lap. Off to a great start after that curve. Well, despite that collision, no auto steering whatsoever, and goddamn better split time there because I wiped out off camera at that corner, a couple corners back there, wiping out, including nearly hitting the tire barrier near the end of the previous lap, which I got a worst time of three minutes, two seconds, five hundred thirty-eight milliseconds, and okay, 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 okay. Where's the tires? Okay, there's the tires. So start turning. Are we good? 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 Good? Tomorrow? Tonight? There's a party? Something in the air tonight? How's that song go? Alright, start braking and turning. There's our brake markers, but we have to turn stronger. I think we're good. Turn stronger again. And I think there are brake markers for this upcoming chicane coming up with the tire barriers that I kind of crashed out earlier off camera. Are there brake markers? Yes, they are. There's brake markers. So... Start hugging the line here. When we get to see the curves, we see the curves. Start turning. Start turning. Damn. There's tires. And back on track. Way worse split time. There we go. We need a worse split time because of me being a total coward, not knowing what the track is all about. And if I swear if I crash out yet and again, I, I crash out real hard, it mobilizes the vehicle like I did a little bit earlier. So there's. Rear are leaking, we got a tire missing, and we got the rear front side of the vehicle. Let's get back on track. So we got the technical front side of the vehicle, technically front left, even though it's the back left that's destroyed. I know there's going to be a left-hand corner as it banks up going up the hill. Okay, here we go. Got the car auto-steer itself. It's auto-steering itself because we hit the damn thing so hard that we're doing donuts in the sand. All right, turn in. At least I know this part, and heading into the final stretch, going backwards with the camera while going, well, backwards as a whole, in drive. We are going to get a 3 minutes, 30 something seconds, a 3 minutes, 36 seconds, 657 milliseconds, a total time of 6 minutes, 39 seconds, 195 milliseconds, putting us in 7th place. And almost coming in dead last compared to the classic Roblox car. Ah, a video I had done like a few months ago. Okay, and hold on right here. Camera as is, hit the back end, and let's go to free roam. That wasn't that shell shocking of a collision, so yeah. Almost got in the last place compared to the Roblox car with a hella oversteering, hella powerful vehicle like the old times of Roblox having no grip, all that good stuff. And let's back up a little bit to see the aftermath destruction vehicles. So we got the engine here. Is the engine like like where the radiator is at, like in the back or something? I gotta test this out right real quick. I think the radiator might be in the back or the tactical front of the vehicle. So damage-wise, well, that's what it is. And real quick, medium-sized collision right here at the front. It's the tactical front side of the vehicle, the bed. So that's where the radiator is at. Okay, now I know. So for the final part of the video, go to main menu, go to free roam, and jump on over to good old Leap of Death to really, really censor this horrible creation. So take you to the top of the ramp and the cliff right now. So, backwards truck, let's get on going, accelerate down the little hill here, and head on over to the ramp. Are we gonna A0 to 62? Doubt it. 47 mile an hour launch right there as the no material truck with the back end of the vehicle with the brake lights goes face plant first down. Um, just face plant face first, as I meant to say. So, let's get a camera set and go to 16 times, hide the UI, go. What is this collision like? We flattened this bad boy big time because of a big steel and a ladder frame chassis. How about the engine? It still runs. Okay then, so uh, that's Windows key full time. How about here? Any collisions here? Into a pinch, and we still got the engine running. What's this? What's this? Rev it. Rev it for proof. Rev it for proof. We're revving. We got tires spinning, going 50 miles an hour with our tires. Can we go to second gear? 
No, that's all our gear, so still revving. Um, we broke our tires, main engine broke it. So that is the engine of so, as it's broken, as we're still bounced down these sides of the cliff here into this little pond, and bang, what a shot from Curry. They got bike bringing us back for the NBA Finals after his COVID recovery. And are we gonna make it to the pond? Barely make it to the pond, so let's skateboard down here. That little hit, splash we go. Really rock it down the bottom of the pond here, the ocean floor, or the sea floor, while the engine is so-called hydrolocking when the engine is already broken. So the aftermath, the destruction of that vehicle going down that cliff face, let's see what it's like. So, it's a big bio pole of mess. We got a little shank development up in here, this little sharp piece of... Why is the car, like, all of a sudden possessed? It's literally moving by itself, like it's shifting down. Up, down, up, down while moving. So for the final part of the video, I'm gonna drive this truck as fast as I can without doing any crazy flips or tricks or whatever. As I get a good enough speed without doing a flip, I'm gonna freeze physics as so, go to free camp, and teleport myself, like, right around here at the top of this here, this this mountain peak here, and crash my way, way back down here to the bottom of the crater where I started driving this here vehicle, which we'll see in a second. So go back to regular cam, unfreeze the physics, and undo the little strength no grabber thingy and accelerate right now, accelerate. But we got this little dip right here, let's see, we got this dip. Hey, respect the dip. Good, respect the dip, we got things losing, a stiff ass suspension, and we're gonna be airborne as so. So 40 miles an hour, get to the top of this here peak right now. Alright, here I am in mid air, doing my worst Dukes of Hazzard depression, so let's just unfreeze physics. There goes a pop sound from the collision, and not the tires whatsoever. Let's do everything as is. We'll tie the UI. There goes the rear of the vehicle. As so, not that bad of a rear collision, and that's the engine being started oil right here. Damn, son. Engine does not run despite the collision. So, tires deflated, manager broken, our tires are now gone. Oh, wow. How about is your pinch? It slows down big time at a speed of around highway speeds, around 60, 70, and it's fluctuating miles per hour. So are we gonna get stuck in these little gaps here, which it appears we may end up doing so. God damn, we're gonna get stuck. No, we're gonna get stuck. We're gonna get stuck way up here? Well, this is the first time. Damn, we got a long ways to go here. This is the first. Normally I get, like, stuck right around here, but not up here. So let's yeet this bad boy at 100% strength. So find a node that I can grab onto. Let's see, 100% strength. Go. Yeah, now we got a freaking spear going out of here. Look at that. Look at that, man. Are we gonna make it to the crater? Or are we gonna, like, shimmy to the right? We're gonna shimmy to the right. Are we gonna make it? No, we hit the rim. Somebody grab that rebound. Draymond, do your job. Do your job, Draymond Green. Well, one more. There we go. Now we reach the crater. Two no grabs, but it's still doable. But, <laughs> That was weird, getting stuck, like, halfway down the crater. Oh, we got a little tire! We got, uh, both our buddies here are two tires. Let's grab a tire here and assault the truck. Not break the tire. There. You can press charges. So, for an aftermath of the destruction of the vehicle, let's hide the UI to get a better look at this. Well, the smoke is arising because we busted up the damn radiator, and the engine is in shambles. Dude, the engine is in shambles right here. It's a polygonal mess up in here. A polygonal mess. I think it's how you say it or pronounce it. And elsewhere about the truck, despite the node grab and the intensity of the collision on the cliff faces, the rock faces, all that good stuff, it's horrible. Completely horrible. So that'll do it with automation and Beeman G Drive with the freaking Serpent Everglade, the backwards truck edition. In terms of how this vehicle performs, I mean, it's pretty much like your typical compact, almost mid-sized truck up in here. It's a good performing engine, really gets up to speed in terms of 0 to 60 and top speed too, so good in power and everything. But for looks and everything, <laughs> I wish it'll come up with true paint colors, but instead we got this little freaking bright orangey mess that shows no material, just screaming right at my face. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Racing Up and signing out.